That's that's the King King James version. You do a little bit of stuttering, <laughs> trying to speak re King James. Uh, uh, I have a hard enough time with regular English, <laughs> uh, so please forgive my stumbling through this foreign language. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we can see here these fo these folks was saved. I love this passage because of uh, Simon the Sorcerer has a whole other message there, but nonetheless, uh, they, 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 were, they were saved, they believed, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and yet had not received the Holy Ghost. Well, we're going to deal with that receiving and what is what is being talked about here as far as receive the Holy Ghost. Now I wanted to get another uh, passage here, uh, Acts 19, uh, also showing a second occurrence. Acts 19, starting at verse 1. To verse 7, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost, since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, on, on to John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that ye that ye that they should believe on him which cometh after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with other tongues and prophesied. Verse 7, and all the men were about twelve. Amen. Okay, again we see that this is a second occurrence. And in this one, with the evidence of, of speaking in tongues. And, well, the three scriptures we've covered so far, John was to conceive prior to Pentecost that the disciples received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And in Acts 8, now these people were saved in Acts 8 with Philip. Don't you just love Philip the Evangelist? <laughs> uh, that whole chapter is wonderful. That evangelism going, I, I, I use that chapter for teaching teaching evangelism. But nonetheless, he, Philip has the zeal for getting folks saved, but yet getting them in, as they say, but there's a bigger work that needs to come place where the uh, 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 take place uh, where the disciples the apostles recognize this and laid on hand that they would receive the Holy Ghost now these terms there's a difference receiving the Holy Ghost we've seen in John 20 and also said receive in Acts chapter 8 and 19 also, but to, to sum all this up, I studied all, every scripture I could get my hands on, I guess you want to say, uh, concerning the Holy Ghost and this receiving and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, and I determined that there is one thing that distinguishes the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, we'll go to Scripture, of course. I'm not looking to Dr. Seuss or, 
or uh, Charles M. Schultz for the answer, or Charles Darwin either for that matter, but we got to stick with the Word of God, amen. I think somebody, somebody agree with me on that. Nonetheless, let's look at Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, 49 says, And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Amen. He said, he, he said, tarry here. Jesus said, tarry here until you be endued with power from on, on high. So he's he prophesying uh, the day of Pentecost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But uh, this is the last chapter uh, of Luke, and we've seen the same last chapter of John. He said, "Receive the Holy Ghost." Seems like uh, we got two different two different gospels, but they go hand in hand uh, if you get the understanding. If you got the Holy Ghost to get the understanding, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. Nonetheless, let's go up, move up to Acts chapter one and eight. Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Now this verse uh, Acts 1 and 8 is an extremely, extremely important verse concerning the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because this is your witness here. He said, And ye shall be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Uttermost parts of the earth, King James. Uh, uh, also, we've seen, and this is this is uh, getting back to our saying, what distinguishes the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, he said, Jesus, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That what? You'll be a witness. That word power is the word dunamis. Likewise, in our Luke 24, uh, 24 verse 49, um, he said, Terry here, Terry here in Jerusalem and, and that until you receive power from on high. Dunamis. That power is your witness. Uh, and that also is the distinguishing between receiving the Holy Ghost and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I wanted to get this verse in here. Uh, John, John 6. And 44. Let's go to that one. St. John 6, verse 44 and 45. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God, every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Amen. Amen. Um, as you can clearly see, you must be drawn by the Father, who is Spirit, to 
get to Jesus or salvation. There is no salvation outside of Jesus. I hope somebody said amen on that one. Uh, Jesus, uh, we can use it, uh, say Yeshua. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Yeshua, I believe that his name was Yeshua. We translate, it's all right to use the name Jesus. I don't want to get into that kind of controversy. Some people th say you have to use Yeshua. We'll stick with Jesus for the teaching. Um, that you must have the Spirit or the Father to lead you to, to Jesus to get salvation. So, you will receive the Holy Ghost to get saved. The Holy Ghost is already there. You can't get saved without the Spirit of God working in your life. One day, one day you just decide to get saved, <laughs> say the sinner's prayer. <laughs> Go to a uh, Billy Graham crusade, I guess, I, I don't know they do that anymore. Uh, go forward in the church or whatever, or somebody uh, telling you about Jesus at your job in the break room. And something in you says, yeah, I got to do this thing. I got to I got to make this commitment. I got to pray that prayer. I got to do something. The Holy Ghost is tugging at your heart. So you already got the Holy Ghost. You don't need no Pentecost uh, for that. So this is what we're trying to deal with here. Why did this occurrence of Pentecost and the other scriptures we've seen in Acts uh, concerning a second occurrence, what is this all about? What is the meaning of baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Okay, we need to look, to, look here to another verse. Uh, in in the book book of Luke, the Gospel according to Saint Luke. Let me just go ahead and read this. Luke, uh, let me tell you where it is at. Luke uh, uh, chapter eleven, verses nine to thirteen. And I say unto you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him, give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he shall ask an egg will he offer him a scorpion if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Amen